So what I'm going to do uh, real quickly and gentlemen is I want to show you how to evaluate these for cosine and tangent really, really quickly. So therefore we can see what the graph looks like for tangent and cotangent. So to evaluate these, I like to look at the unit circle again, right? So when looking at the unit circle, we need to know our main three important points, or actually five important points. We know these two points, one comma zero, zero comma one. We know that this point is pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, pi over two, right? And then this point, I'm running out of space, but this point is square root of three over two comma one half. This point is square root of two over two comma square root of two over two. And this point is one half comma square root of three over two. That is the coordinate points for each one of these. Now, if I said evaluate for cotangent and tangent, we need to remember that the tan, or let's do tangent, the tangent of theta equals y over x, where the cotangent of theta equals x over y. That is when we have an angle that intersects the unit circle. If it intercepts the unit circle, we have those, and we have that coordinate point to evaluate for our angle, we just take the ratio of our x and y coordinates. All right? Now, I understand that I didn't do the whole unit circle, but we don't need to know the whole unit circle to be evaluated for these. So what we're going to do, um, does everybody have these? Because I'm going to erase that. What we're going to do now is evaluate for the cotangent of theta. So for the tangent of theta, ladies and gentlemen, that is just y over x. So let's look at the angle of 0. The angle of 0 here is y over x. So that is 0 over 1, which we know is 0, right? Um, if I did cotangent of theta, that's 1 over 0. Well, if that's 1 over 0, can we divide by 0? No. So therefore, it's what we call undefined. And I'll just um, simplify that by und. All right, now let's go and look at pi over 4. The tan of theta of pi over 4, well, that's going to be square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2. Well, those are the exact same numbers, even though how crazy they look. So that's 1. If I reciprocate these, is cotangent going to be the exact same? Yes. So let's save ourselves a little bit of time and just say cotangent is going to be the exact same. The reciprocal of square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2 is still the exact same thing. Let's go and look at pi halves. Tangent of theta for pi halves is y over 0, or 1 over 0, I'm sorry. So now tangent is undefined. Well, if I reciprocate these, the cotangent theta is going to be um, 1 over 0, which equals, no, 0 over 1, which equals 0. All right? These are really, really important to know. So now let's get into 3 pi over 4. Well, 3 pi over 4, ladies and gentlemen, is not on my first quadrant, right? But 3 pi over 4 is directly across. It's in the second quadrant, and it's just a reciprocal of my angle pi over 4. It's just pi over 4 reflected in the second quadrant. So what is negative in, in, uh, for this? For the, which, which coordinate is negative in the second quadrant? The x, right? So therefore, this point over here for 3 pi over 4 is just going to be negative square root of 2 over, um, or I'm sorry, square root of 2 over 2 divided by negative square root of 2 over 2. So therefore, the tangent of theta equals square root of 2 over 2 divided by negative square root of 2 over 2, because now the x coordinate is negative in this third quadrant. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's just going to be negative 1. Therefore, the cotangent, the reciprocal of that, is still going to be negative 1. Um, for pi, that's going to be the reciprocal of here. So now it's going to be negative 1. So that point, that point is at negative 1, 0. So again, that doesn't matter. Tangent of theta is going to be 0, y over negative 1. That's just equal to 0. Cotangent of theta is undefined. 5 pi over 4, now it's this point reflected in the fourth quadrant, or this point reflected into the fourth quadrant. So now it's not just x that's negative, but it's x and y that are negative. So therefore, the tangent, I'm not going to write it this time because I'm going to try to fix this up, is going to be negative square root of 2 over negative square root of 2, which is positive 1. And the cotangent of theta is going to be the exact same thing. For 3 pi over 2, that's that angle right down there, which is 0, negative 1. 
The tangent is y over x, which is 0. And the cotangent of theta is undefined. Uh, hold on. That's pi, so that should be y over x, 0, y over 0. No, I'm sorry, that's undefined. Sorry, right? That's 0. Because y over x, the 0 is in the denominator, so it's undefined. Um, 7 pi over 4, that's this angle right here. So now it's a reflection of that point in the fourth quadrant, so now the y is negative. Again, who really cares which one of these is negative? If one's negative and one's positive, we know the answer is going to be negative 1. So the tangent of theta equals negative 1. The cotangent of theta is also going to equal negative 1. For 2 pi, that's going to be the exact same as 0, right? That's a whole revolution. 0 or 2 pi. It's going to be the exact same answer. So the tan of theta equals 0, and the cotangent of theta is undefined. Whew. All right, so now we just knocked that out. So now let's go and look at what the graphs are. So I previously, this is like just to kind of show you guys where this is, all this stuff is coming from and why we're doing it, especially when you're looking and studying your, um, your chemistry and seeing how that all relates to it because it's very sim similar to what we're going to be talking about. So anyways, um, so now I really had nothing to do with anything. So now let's go in. Uh, what, I, what I was trying to talk about was when I talked about, when I showed you guys how to graph sine and cosine, we first started with that parent graph. You have to know what the general shape is. You all right, Kobe? You have to know the general shape of your um, parent graphs. So let's go ahead and do the tangent graph. And let's go ahead and do the cotangent graph. And you're going to want to write these down because students all the time mix them up. All right? So to do the cotangent graph, let's go ahead and just plot some points. At 0, when ta at the angle 0, when I plug in 0, I have 0. So at this y-axis, I have an x-intercept. The next point, at pi over 4, tangent is equal to 1. So I can say at pi over 4, tangent equals 1. At pi halves, tangent is undefined. Now, I know, ladies and gentlemen, that we do not um, deal with uh, asymptotes like we used to in previous and pre-calculus. But hopefully in Algebra 2, you guys remember when we found a 0 in the bottom of a rational function or equation, that produced this nice little dotted line that we said the graph approached. Right? It was a nice little dotted line. It, it rhymed with isotope or asymptote, right? So therefore, at pi half, since my graph is undefined for tangent, I'm going to draw a nice little dotted line. All right? Now, let's go to the next one. At 3 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, tan is now equal to negative 1. At pi, my graph is equal to 0. At 5 pi over 4, my graph is now equal to 1. And at 3 pi over 2, my graph is now um, undefined. Okay. Now, the important thing for you guys to understand about the cotangent or about the tangent graph, remember, when you have an asymptote, that's what the graph approaches. So my graph approaches here, and it approaches there. Now, it just needs to connect between those two graphs. So that's what the tangent curve looks like. All right, kind of looks like a nice little S curve going up. Yes? Because that's, the, that's where my graph is undefined. So when it's undefined, that's an asymptote, and that's where your graph is going to approach. Now, to show the tangent graph, usually tangent graph is really helpful to do the positive and the negative. That, the reason being is because it intersects right at 0. So therefore, I could do negative pi over 4. And guess what? Negative pi over 4 is negative 1. Negative pi halves is going to be undefined. If you guys want to evaluate those yourself, you can. I'm sorry. Yes. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, that's two periods. OK? That's going to be two periods that you have. All right? That's what two periods look like for tangent. Now let's go to the points on cotangent. 
cotangent at zero, let's put zero over here, at zero is undefined. Well, if it's undefined at zero, that means it's a asymptote, right? Then the next one, at uh, pi over four, it's equal to one. At uh, pi halves, it's equal to zero, and at three and at uh, three pi over four, it's equal to negative one, and at pi, it's undefined. All right. Now I'm only going to do just to kind of keep this video a little bit smaller, huh? Okay. All I'm doing is I'm taking these angles and making them on my x-axis, just like I did for tangent. Okay? Then what I'm doing is now I'm taking the values of each one of those angles. So the first one was undefined, because it's not an x-intercept, it's an asymptote. The second point is at 1, so at pi over 4, it's 1. At pi halves, it's 0. At 3 pi over 4, it's negative 1. And at when the angle's pi, my value is undefined. You see that? OK, so now. I connect my points, and you guys can see it's very similar to the cotangent graph, except the x-intercept x doesn't cross at 0 and for the parent graph, but the x, first x-intercept that crosses is at pi halves. The asymptotes are in different places. But one thing I want you guys to know is, how long does it take for this graph to repeat? The distance between the asymptotes is what? Pi. And this graph is just going to keep on repeating. It's going to, the next one, um, if I, I'll do it again. 5 pi over 4, 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, and 2 pi. 2 pi again is undefined, so it's that nice little asymptote. That's at negative 1, that's at 0, that's at 1. Okay, so what I want you guys to understand about the tangent um, tangent falls left, rises right. Cotangent rises left, falls right. And what is the distance that it takes for the graph to repeat itself? Pi. What was the distance it took for sine and cosine to repeat itself? 2 pi, right? So for tangent and cotangent, the period is not 2 pi. Now it's only pi, all right? And there's going to be another difference that I'm going to do with you guys. You guys, I did four, I did four intervals, right? I showed you guys four intervals. The four intervals, the first interval gives you, or let's look at it here. The first interval gives you just a point, a point on the graph. That's very helpful in graphing sine and cosine. The next interval gives you the x-intercept. The third interval gives you another point on the graph. And the fourth interval tells you the, where the asymptote is. All right? However, in this class, I'm not going to be so concerned about you guys having these exact values for these points. I'm only going to be concerned about making sure that you know where the x-intercept is and where the asymptote is. All right? So that's going to affect our x scale, which I'll go through with you guys right now. All right? Does anybody have?